Hello and welcome to this special bonus episode of The Dairy Age. Chagas are running a weekly Let's Talk Dairy webinar series, which is also being made available as a podcast. On this week's webinar, Stuart Childs is joined by Stephen Connolly from ABP and John Tobin from Munster Bovine to discuss the best beef bulls to select for the breeding season. Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this week's Let's Talk Dairy. So um, this week we're going back to the beef side of things and people might be wondering why we're doing that. Uh, why do we keep focusing on beef? So we spent a lot of time early on in the year this year talking about the importance of getting the right bull selection for the dairy side of things. So making sure that we had the right EBI selections made in terms of the replacements that we're going to generate. And obviously with the, the, we'll say the, the way things are going environmentally, etc., there's question marks about the scale that we need to be in terms of numbers of heifers that we're going to be generating. And also with, I suppose, improved fertility across herds as well. Um, the numbers of, of inseminations that need to be done to generate those replacements um, are reducing. So the, the switch to, to beef AI is going to come a little bit earlier. So we should be, like Doreen often talks about it, John, I suppose, from the point of view of um, getting all the heifer cows born in early or in February, ideally, and maybe early March at the latest. So that switch to, to the switch to beef AI, as we would see it, it, should be starting to happen around now. But what we are a little bit concerned about is that the switch is happening, but it's a switch to, to beef bulls uh, and the bull power element of it is going to be an issue. So today I'm joined by Stephen Connolly from ABP. Uh, and Stephen has done a video there recently uh, just outlining the importance of the bull choice in terms of beef, beef carcasses. And I'm also joined by John Tobin. So John is working with Munster Bovine. And John is going to be talking about the this whole bull power side of things. So making sure that we've put in a lot of effort to get our 90% submitted in three weeks, et cetera, and uh, to make sure that people don't let it all go for naught, basically, by leaving off a bull too early uh, when we should continue to use our beef AI. So Stephen is going to give us the, I suppose, the, the outline for what John is going to be talking about in terms of the bull selections and the options that you'll have through using beef AI. So Stephen has a very, very good video here, which I'm just going to share. Uh, we're going to play that first, and then Stephen is going to talk about the, the, the what they're seeing in their program with ABP uh, and how bull choice is influencing performance of animals. Okay, so just bear with me there one second while I share this video. What we want to talk about is why is animal breeding or why is genetics important? And we have a few examples, so real live examples, uh, to show from two different sires to show the difference in performance. So if we're just taking this animal here, um, this, this uh, Angus heifer is by uh, AA5280. And I suppose if we look into the genetics of that sire, uh, he has a, a calving difficulty of 3.6 on dairy cows. He has a carcass weight figure of 8.9 kilos. The breed average for Angus is six, so he's above breed average. So the calves from that bull should have heavier carcasses uh, than the average Angus bull. He has a DBI of 79 euros, but it's important when you look at DBI to look at the B sub index because that's the carcass performance index, so your carcass weight, your conformation, your feed intake, and he's a value of 46 euro. And I suppose our advantage beef program for 2023 is set a minimum standard of 30, 35 euro or greater or equal to, whereas he's above that, he's 46. Whereas if we look at the animal behind, so this animal is a similar age, but from a different sire. So she's from uh, Angus sire AA5407. When we look at the calving figure of that bull, he's a figure of 2.6, but his carcass figure is only 1.3 carcass. So the previous animals, the sire is 8.9, whereas this bull's progeny, his, his case carcass figure on, on his index is 1.3. So considerably below the breed average. His DBI is 72 euro, but in contrast to the performance of the other, the other bulls' uh, figures, his, his B sub index is 25 euro. The average weight of progeny from 5280 is 434 kilos, versus the average weight of all the progeny from 5407 is 354 kilos. So a full 80 kilos, so similar age, but there's 80 kilos more weight uh, currently. So it's huge, huge difference. So it shows the importance when you're going buying calves that you need to start asking that question. What is the genetics of that animal? What sire is he by? And, and then drill down through looking at the, the genetics of that bull. 
Okay, so Stephen, we'll come to you there to just follow through on it, I suppose. So a lot of this is probably new to dairy farmers in one sense, because look, DBI is around with a few years and uh, like we've been we've been talking about it, but you're actually looking at the breakdown of the components of it there. And obviously from your side of the business, you need to focus on that beef side, whereas I suppose all along the dairy farmer just can would continually focus on the calving ease piece. Now, the, I suppose what, what isn't... Um, what you didn't, what you weren't trying to drive there was the difference in the calving ease because it doesn't actually have to be down to that figure. It's it's actually the, the beef sub index is the driver. Yeah, a hundred. I think hundred percent. Like we, we, there's bulls there that can be you know, easy calve and, and Georgia station with good beef traits, and I think it's getting that balance first of all. Um, you know, and every farm has a different threshold of calving difficulty, so. You know, whatever figure you pick on your farm, use the best beef bull. Uh, looking at the DBI, look at the, you know, the best beef sub index bull possible for that calving difficulty. Like so, does um. So I think that's that's the first point. Like it's it's a balance that we that we want. Like so, does um. And uh, I suppose what we've found like on all this, like so, is for the for the for the beef farmer, what we've seen, we're we're working with uh, leading eye companies, ICF and Chagas in the Dairy Beef in Ireland program. So. There's a lot of data behind it. Uh, the research we found, and uh, your your topic of the, today's discussion, I think, is uh, what is it that no uh, all bulls are, are all bulls the same or different? Like, or what's the difference? Like, um, that is very important because what we found over the last uh, since 2015, we progeny tested 153 bulls, so we had 4,000 cattle in that. Uh, we had 60,000 weights going to ICBF, and uh, if we just pick the Angus breed. So, and we look at the sires, the good, the best sire versus the worst sire, we have found uh, 46 kilos of carcass weight at exactly the same age. We're killed exactly the same age with 46, 46 kilos. And at today's price, that's well over 200 euro. So like the calves will look very similar as calves. Like, so it is, and I suppose as a farmer or buying calves, you're very hard to tell. But when hit that yearling stage, which the video is shown, uh, the difference just get bigger and bigger between the calves and the best sires versus the versus the worst sires. I suppose from a beef farmer's point of view, two hundred euros and over two hundred is a lot of money, like so. Does. So, um, I suppose what we're trying to get to get to is that we start using so it's looking at what what cows are going to put the beef bulls and just look at using a slightly better beef bull either you know, in in AI, like so. Does, because there's huge differences there uh, for the beef farmer. Um, and Stephen, I presume you're not buying any um, stock bull bred stock into the into the program. So, we? so look, the, this program it's a it's a breeding program, so it is. So it's 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 so it's mostly all all AI, and yeah. um, that's what it is. So look, we what we want to do is and look working with, our, with the partners is identify these bulls that you know, are easy calving short gestation, but with good beef traits for the beef farmer. And I suppose not just that the carcass is one thing. Um, but also look at other elements such as maybe what's their feed efficiency like. So that's a huge thing. We don't see that. Uh, and it fits into the whole environmental, you know, whether the economic efficiency versus, and the environmental and also methane. Um, and so taking a step further when these arms are finished, we actually take steak samples from them. So we're trying to get the full the full picture like so. It is, um, and like what we've found, irrespective of breeds, there's good and bad within every breed like so it is. And, I suppose it's it's about picking the picking the ones with the best uh, beef characteristics. Okay, so just to emphasise, I suppose for people that the stock that you're looking at there were managed exactly the same, and it's purely been driven by the gen- choices of genetics behind them. And both of those obviously were AI sires as well. Like, yeah, so like so on the farm in, in Carlow, so that we buy in roughly four hundred cows per year, uh, twenty cows per bull, and we put a you know a number of bulls into each dairy farm. Uh, so that takes into account the effect of, of herd and they're reared exactly like at the same micro placer, they're weighed every month, they're on the same grass. So everything, same management, treated exactly the same. So that's, uh, and they're brought to finishing uh, on that farm. So that, that is a key, a key point. Like, so that's, um, but it is important as a calf, it is hard to see that. And this is what I said, what we want to do now is get beef farmers asking that question, you know, what is the genetics that? that of that calf when he's buying them uh, because we are seeing uh, we're seeing that big that impact and I suppose even our, our advantage program uh, we set a minimum standard for calves being born next year so this year's breeding season they, be, they must be from a sire uh, of 35 euro or greater on the beef sub index of the DBI on the dairy side 
So I think that's a, a positive message or a strong message uh, from our end, like we because we've seen the economic benefit, the benefit to, to the farmer and the environmental. And look, there will be a bonus being paid on that, like a 20 cent bonus through the Advantage program. Like So we, we want to push that more uh, for the beef farmers. And clearly, Stephen, that uh, that 35 euros is setting some sort of a carcass slim, uh, weight threshold as well for nothing less than uh, eight, that, like you'd eight or nine kilos there for, for that bull. Yeah, like it, it's a very good point. So look, the breed average would say, so what we need to be doing is, as, as so dairy farmers selecting bulls, look at the beef sub index, but also look at you know, the carcass. That's, that is a big one, like so as well. If you put, so it's, first of all, if you get people looking at the beef sub index, you know, if it's 35 euro or greater, so that's to me that's you're going in the in the right direction but there's a lot of bulls uh, in ai that are you know 50 60s 100s 150 like so it's across all the breeds like so the higher the better but i suppose it's it's very important to try and get rid of that bottom you know 20 percent like so so look we'd be liking if you can get you know 10 kilos in our anguses like so the limousines could be 24 or 5 kilos of carcass weight so look the higher the better but i suppose it's about creating a win-win for the dairyman to balance the easy calving with the with the carcass and look looking at the active bull list there uh, i just looked at before i came on there's a lot of bulls available there above 35 euro uh, below four percent calving difficulty and under 12 euros a straw like so there's um i think there's 130 bulls there so the bulls are there like so there's um for for the dairy farmers to, to use okay so you're teeing it up nicely now to switch across to you john so so, John, I suppose, um, what do you see as the challenge, I suppose, with the beef from, from a monster point of view? Um, obviously, we're trying to promote it strongly that people will continue to use beef, but the temptation is to just take the easy option, I suppose, is it? I suppose it is. Yeah. Sure, look, we're coming up to the weekend, and I think every tractor in the country is going to be at silage, and farmers are saying, without the bulls and don't do any more AI. But um, there's a couple of parts of that, like, is, um, you know, First of all, like if any farmer looks in their farm ops app there, they'll see how many bulls they need for cows that are currently coming on heat. And when you look at that figure, a lot of us don't have enough bull power on farm. So look, we bandy out numbers like a bull for every 30, a bull for every 15, because you have to give them rest. And look, for what I say is a bull, a bull could do three cows every two days, and that's it. And um, if you want them and ask them to do more, fair enough. But if you want to get your cows in calf, that's not going to be good enough. And it's as simple as that short. So... That's, that's the real challenge is have enough bull power on farm. And when we talk bull power, we're talking mature bulls, like a young bull. Like, just they can't be doing any more than a cow a day, really. They just can't. They can't really. They're looking about maybe three cows every four days. So you have to have that bull power on, on farm. And it's very simple. If you have four cows bulling today and you have one bull, you don't have enough bull power. So you have to you have to ask yourself, and that's different now when you're going, say, from week five, five or six into mating as opposed to week 12. So that, that's, that's been the challenge from our point of view there. But, the, you know, again, there's data there that you can use on farm. Um, you have cows there, like 25%, I think, the national herd is calving from April onwards. So a lot of those lads are not bullshit. Those cows are not bullshit. So you can say to yourself, right, again, the farm ops app, if you jump into it there and you jump in cows not bred, we'll give you the list. So there's no going through a spreadsheet or nothing. Pull out those, and you might say, 100 cow herd, right, I have... 15 of them there, there's 10 of them I'll do. Ring the vet today. You'll get that cedar program done and, and get a synchro done and those eight calvers maybe the next few weeks or from once a day or the next week. You're looking at maybe a February calver or the first few days of March. So, you know, Stephen is talking about 200 euros for the beef, man. You know, do get them calving in the end of February, last day of February as opposed to mid-April. You know, you're looking at a lot more money for the dairy, man. So there's win-wins there we could look at again. There's no we talk, talked about besides the GA stuff that you can't be saying on that <laughs> on live. Um, but we also talked about, you know, you're spending big money in a bull. You get one breed and there's no proof around that bull, no issues. And he can only serve one cow a day. Like, so if you look at there, you still say one cow a day or two cows a day if you really want to think he's super, right? He's costing you three grand. He's only about 40 cows. Like, it's, just, it's, it's big money for your AI. You're looking about 80 euros a, a pop there, go, as well as feeding them. Like, it's, it's a lot cheaper. 999 times out of 1,000, that's bull coming out of AI would be better than your stock bull. Like, so you're giving yourselves options, you're taking it easy. And like, if you look at our panels there and all the figures there that Stephen's putting out there around being six for carcass weight, like all, all our angles is there above it there. Like if you look at that um, short station panel, like so like, it's, it's, it's a win there. You know, if you look at doing, say, those cows not bred, 
there was an option there, like you could bring those cows back. Big win for the dairy farmer. If you get nothing for the beef calf, you're still winning. But you know, good quality calves, beef farmer buys them, sees the results like Stephen, he's back again next year. And a lot of lads will tell you, there's two things. They either want to get rid of the calves really, really fast, or the second thing, like toward the dairy farm, still finish your own beef. You want to be finished best beef. You, you're, you're doing AI to get the best cows. Why don't you want the best beef? And that's the other side of it too. So um, two big parts from it there, um, I think, is, is that bull power. And then also, look, why you want to do those lay carvers? There's an opportunity there. You generate good quality beef. Or if, you, if you have one or two of those cows, and you say, you know what, I want a replacement off them. There's short gestation there. Brings you back seven days or something like that. You know, you're still having in February instead of April. So that'd be, that'd be our thoughts on it. Yeah, and John, I suppose just the, the actual choices of bulls would say there, like that you have as well, like I, uh, like we were saying earlier as well, there's a, a, a sock for every shoe kind of scenario. Like you, you give the variation in cows that you're presenting with, with a stock bull, be he young or old, it's the same bull that's in, in a jumping on the first calf or the light first calf or, or the very strong mature cow and the calf that you get out of that then is just a combination of both basically. But like you, you said it there now that your your all your bulls are in excess of the figures that Stephen has talked about there. And you actually have bulls that will be quite quite much a good bit higher in carcass weight that could very easily be used on a mature cow to generate quite a good calf um relative to we'll say what you're we'll say maybe using your easy calf or that you would be recommending for the for the, the lighter uh we'll say the maiden heifers and the lighter first calvers yeah. as well. So just the, we'll say the choices that you have there in, in that sense. And, and the other thing I'd like you to comment on is, is on the calving ease piece, like we'd say, what's, what's the perception of that? Or what, like, like Stephen has said, that's obviously very, very important for dairy farmers. Um, what we'll say, would you have, do you have any comment on that in terms of like people, people, like we're talking about moving to beef bulls here that are going to be no harder calving in a lot of cases than the dairy stock that they've been using in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, look, sure, look, if you look at what Martin said, like, we have A662, Harachi O, like, it's 14 for um, carcass weight. Now, just the station might be back a day or two, but a real, real strong um, animal there. But even our short station is carcass weight is six like, or eight. And that's in, um, that's our Aberdeen Angus. And you do stand heifer. So it's like kind of happy days there. You're, you're, you're doing what Stephen wants you to do. And you're getting an easy cabin on, on the main heifer. So we have, um, if you jump on the website, we have this going out about is our short station panel. And on there, like on the right hand side of that there, you'll see that we can use what you use on maiden heifers, on second calvers, and on cows. So as you were talking there on cows, other breeds like a Belgian blue, we have some there with the calving ease. Short gestation for a Belgian blue, but again, you're talking a day or two, right? In the difference. But you're talking like if you talk to anyone in the marks or anywhere, we're talking 200 euros there of a calf value there, a couple of weeks old. So you're going to get that two days back, um, mature cow. And, and if you have a couple of Belgian blues and you are selling them out of the yard, whatever else you have there that has to go, they can easily go in with them. Like it, it makes you a lot more marketable product. Um, so like BB7278, BB5226, very strong there. Like you, Stephen said six, these are 19 and 27, but they are Belgian blues, but they are easy calving and we're, and we're getting better in that space. And I suppose what I'd be saying to lads, use, if you're first time, use a few, a small amount, see how you feel on good, big, mature cows. Um, and don't, I suppose, think of horror stories of 25 or 30 years ago, because we moved on from that. And look, like as we spoke about before, uh, short, we could never have been young lads. You can nearly count the amount of times you didn't use a, a, a calving yeah, jack with, yeah, with the beef stock. And now you can nearly count how many times you do use it. So um, like times have changed. And I think we just have to try and just move that mindset as well and make it more, uh, more productive. So like just station lengths on those, like on, on um, Angus's, your minus three, minus 3.4, but you're coming off then, like say, minus, uh, I think 383 is just station length there. So you're talking 279, so it's short gestation. Belgian blue, I think it's about 285, and they're minus two. So you're looking at 383, but look, your stock bull is going to be that anyway. So it's yeah. not like you have to make a decision. If, if, if you really want anything, John, the stock bull is going to carry a few days in the vast majority of cases, unless he's some sort like, of a test bull that you're after picking up somehow, you know, that he was potentially AI bull, potentially. But just didn't make the grade yeah. for whatever reason. Chances are they're going to carry time. Yeah, yeah, most of the time, yeah, yeah. 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 So, time like, to go be that. so yeah, like I think you're making some very valid points there. Like we'll say in terms of following up now, like as I said, we put so much emphasis into those first three weeks, 
Um, the follow-up now on those April calvers, as you said, 25% on average of every, every herd. So 25 out of 100 cows basically are calving in April yeah. or after April. Uh, so they've, they're only just coming kind of fit to serve now. And people get tired of AI. So you're, you're saying to use that synchronization program to one, make sure that they get yeah. submitted and two, uh, kind of get to take the job of trying to actually get them, uh, pick them up out of the way as well, like. Yeah, take the pressure off the bull power because if we're back to that bull power, like it's, you're asking the bull to do a lot. Yeah. And, and the second thing is you have those late carvers. You want to bring them back earlier, like you're taking the April carver back into February carver, like you have an opportunity to do that. And like, sure, we're sitting here, like we can easily talk the talk. And that's, you know, and, and you could talk about that, you know, the value of grass walking and you have to do it 40 times a year. And it's a big job. Like a lad has literally, they have to come off this webinar, ring the vet, jump in the farm ops um, app, they'll pull out. Cows not bred, how many stock bulls they need, right? The information's there. Pull out the cows in the morning, give them the jab or do whatever they need to do. And then they'll be doing AI then next week. You know, as per normal, it's, it's very simple to do. And what you're looking at there in the 100 cow herd, you could be bringing maybe 10 cows from April back into the February. And you're giving a good beef calf, then a dairy beef animal, then that, you know, in February will probably, you know, you can move on then as well, like that you can hopefully... You know, yeah, you just you just have the benefit of the early beef cast as well coming through. Is there is there anything else, John, you could be doing other than synchronizing Joe for lads might want to go down that route just to, to use more beef AI like or any tips on that? So that probably would be interesting. Right. Uh, well, yeah, like sure look. Um there, there's other options there as well. Like you have to new the the what do you call it, just better heat detection. Maybe they're going down there, use that re put on the paint again, better heat detection for the following three weeks. Um the, the other option then is maybe go once a day if they want for those late carvers to bring them around and say, look, bring them around. I'm going to do another 10 days of AI for once a day and they'll come. And they do. And there's, there's a lot, a lot of um, a lot of research has shown there the benefits of doing once a day on those late carvers. Um, uh, it's a bit early for the early scan, I think, at that way. But maybe look at those late carvers, just get them handled, make sure they are cleaned um, as well. And that comes outside of if you're doing beef or whatever you're doing, just get them handled and clean. But... Um, as I said, the panels there of the bulls, like you look at the Dilly Jean, like they're very strong and our panels there this year are very strong. Like that bull you use, you showed there, AA5280, is actually a show. I sent on that video to, to Dennis Howard there and I saw the social media that evening or that morning. And um, like he was saying, like, that's one of our laws, I think, in the beef sub index. So like very strong there, like, and they're getting better because that bull is, that, that yearling there you have is two years old. So they're getting better on. And that's what I was alluding to earlier is, like when you're using maybe those Belgian blues, and I'm not telling you like go Belgian blue all out everywhere. Use a few, see how we get on. Some lads love it, and they'll use a bit more next year. Or you could look at some like the Charlie or the Limousine or whatever else that's there. Yeah, so I suppose it's um, just to kind of comment on what you said there, John. Actually, uh, like George and I were looking at uh, and and yourself obviously kind of trying to do some bit of promotion about about the dairy beef and. And Stephen beat us to it, I suppose, and, and delivered exactly what we were kind of looking for because he had the information which we kind of didn't have. So all we had really was kind of farmer stories about it, really. And uh, one, one that comes to my mind about it is a, a guy that I met very recently that was using some uh, Gene Ireland limbs and stuff. And you might talk about the Gene Ireland program in a second, Stephen. Um, and he, he said he rang ICBF to order a few, uh, I think it was 10 was the minimum straws you could order of, of limousines. And limousines would obviously be very strongly related with long gestation, generally speaking. But the Gene Ireland program is, is, try, is picking these bulls that they're shorter gestation. When he rang ICBF about it, he said, I suppose I'm going to regret this. He says, Am I? And the guy that was on the other side of the phone said, Sure, we'll, you'll have to wait and see. So he ordered 10 straws. The following year, he ordered 20 straws. And his comment in relation to the calving ease piece was that we just need to have a bit of patience because we see big groups coming when cows are calving beef calves and we panic and we dive in and we start pulling calves and cows get hurt. Whereas because we're used to the fine bone or the lighter bone of the dairy calf coming, we, get, we don't get so concerned about it and we give them the time and they're able to calve them themselves. So I think that in itself was, was one interesting comment. And the other thing was that that farmer actually showed me his ICBF notebook that day and he'd several of his limbs and bulls that had calved five and seven days ahead of time. So they're really, like, like you're saying, that, that gain that we're getting in terms of genetics. And that's another advantage of using beef AI over a stock bull because obviously a beef stock bull being on a farm, he has at least, he'll surely, unless he gets hurt, is going to do two years 
on the farm, possibly three, possibly four, if you can kind of keep them fit. So you're actually stalling the quality of the animal that's coming through. So Stephen, maybe you'd comment on the, the program that you're with the, the Gene Ireland program. Obviously, John, you're involved in it too, so you might uh, throw a comment into it too uh, when Stephen's finished there. Yeah, no, no issue. And I suppose even back to your just your point in the limousines, like it's again, it's it's maybe you want to use them slightly earlier, and maybe coming near the end of the breed stage, you might switch to to a different breed. Like so you have, I suppose you have that scope there, like so. As and as back to the point, I suppose for us on the, in that Gene Ireland program in involving the, the breed doesn't matter we want the best within the breed like so this um so look the gene iron program it was set up in 2015 uh looking at you know, identifying these more suitable beef bulls for the dairy herd um and it started off very very small scale uh we only had about three thousand straws going out in year one i think we only had about 10 bulls uh like this year i'd say we're up coming close to twenty thousand doses of semen I think the guys are sold out in SEMA, like which is a which is a great result from from ICBF and and the guys working with it. So it's grown massively. Uh, the beef, the dairy farmers like being involved in it. But what it is basically is that you buy these the pack of semen, so that you put up thirty five doses of semen with maybe four or five bulls, and um, basically you have to record when you inseminate that cow if you're if you're doing DIY, record your calving difficulty, the gestation length, maybe if you can cause the calf vigor, or the calf size. Uh, a proportion of them animals will then be bought back by ourselves onto the trial farm for more in-depth, I would say, analysis. So we genotype them, and the farmer that uh, record that basically records information we buy the cows back from. Uh, once the genotype comes back, that is verified by the sire, which is very important. Uh, we give a twenty-five euro bonus for them for them select cows for for the farmer, Joe, uh, for for supplying the data. Um, and then what we do is basically we buy in twenty cows per bull from each of the sires. We'll record their weight on arrival, we'll record their weight after their finished milk, uh, after their weaning, and then every month thereafter, they get about you know, 22, 23 weights in their lifetime, so it is. Um, any health incidents is recorded, and so the big thing is we draw all the information every month is into ICBF, feeds into evaluations. When the animals are killed, all the carcass data feeds into ICBF evaluations to basically make these, you know, identify these young bulls, ensure that they are, they, they're doing what they say on the tin, and that you know that it's um, their high reliability in the shortest period possible. Um, when we kill, when we slaughter them, then uh, we also, as I said, we take a steak sample, so the whole meat quality area to see how that's looking. It's, it's something a bit further down the line. And so the other thing, a proportion is going to go into Tully and the measure individual feed intake, like so it is, and methane. Which look, we have to talk about this, like so it is. It's where it's going. We're very carbon efficient for dairy and beef. Sometimes we forget that. And we need to push that, but we need to do our share. And genetics can do that. Like, so again, and we need to get dairy and beef farmers and the industry working together because you can't have a successful dairy industry without a successful beef industry. And I think maybe we forgot that a bit. And I think there is bulls there that are going to, so the world says, uh, I think Rose Gould needed win wins. So it's that we need to you know that it's a win for the dairy farmer, but also for the beef farmer. And sometimes we get caught up in money. And uh, I'm a beef farmer as well, and for me, so I like money, so I do. But um, we sometimes have to think about the stress impact. I saw me as a dairy farmer, we were dairy in the home. But it is a huge thing. If I use, if I'm thinking going to use bulls, you know, above 35 euro at least on the beef sub index, you know, that if you know it comes back in, that Joe Bloggs is going to come back to me, or the two or three guys, look, guys, I'm going to give them adequate colostrum and vaccinate my cows. And they're from these sires, you know, whether they're AI or Stockwell, they're, they're, they're the best sires available uh, and they're going to get a good start of life. You know, that beef farmer is going to want to come back to you. And for me, if I knew that in August as a dairy farmer, I know that, you know, I know where my calves are going. Uh, I know, you know labour, that I should be okay. I'm not going to be feeding extra calves. We did see that this year, come the calves was, you know, milk per place has gone up. Concentrates have gone up, so rearing calves is a high cost for a beef farmer. Um, so that, I think, is a huge element. So it's not just about the money. Yes, you'll have a more marketable calf, but I think John mentioned the point, a repeat customer and the stress that you know he's going to, if I use these better bulls, uh, he's going to come back. And, and it's, it's very si similar to your EBI, if you're selling replacement heifers. The dairy farmer rings up, asks what's the EBI. Most of the time, if they're not high EBI, high EBI they won't buy them. And we're not at that stage yet in beef farmers, but uh, I even see on the, we have a new beef benchmark report for beef farmers, like the Pope report. 
And we looked at the commercial beef value for a lot of these farmers, and it, it splits the animals for the beef farmer to top third, middle and bottom. The high index cattle are younger, with more carcass weight, they're making more money for the beef farmer. So like, it's only a matter of a time before beef farmers are going to start asking that question. And I'd say for dairy lads, if you're ahead of the game, you're going to have more marketable calves. And there's more than likely going to be more beef calves coming this year um, with more sex semen. So you want to be on the top of the pile of my calves, you know, are on top and you know, they're the calves to buy over someone losing a low, a low index. And like even the advantage program setting that minimum standard of 35 euro, like we want to make improvements and I'm sure industry and government, that is the way it's going. And like, even as a farmer, I buy in calves as well. It works. You will not see it as a calf, but when they come as a yearling, like you're going to have more weight, hopefully younger at slaughter. And they're more than we're going to tick the boxes in terms of carcass weights. So you get your, whether your Angus bonus or quality assured. Uh, it is very, very important. Um, for, for Steven, yeah, like Steven, so it's no different than DBI. You look at two, two heifer calves or just, what's the difference between two heifer calves if they come off the stock bull or come off the high EBA one or wherever they come from? Well, when they grow, when they grow and they're fully mature and they have to deliver for you, that's where you see it. And I suppose you have to take that, you know, just two young Holstein, Holstein Frisian heifer calves, no difference. Same with the Aberdeen Angus, but when they mature, there's a difference there. Like it's, it's, you know, it's very complicated, but very simple as well, like to understand like that. It's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. And look, from, from a dairy point of view, like there's loads of different, like loads of different indexes for beef. Like it, it can be a bit confusing, like, so it can, like you have CBI, you have the beef sub index of it. Like uh, I would say for any guy that you know, isn't sure, I'd say Stuart, I'm sure Chagas would be happy to help or, or Munster or whoever to go through that with them because it is a bit confusing. It's a, it is a big mindset change that where we were a couple of years ago, I know John uh, KYA was the, I think everyone knows that bull like so this, but uh, it good was, and bad. you know, and good and bad. He he was unbelievably easy to have in the short gestation like so it was like, and everyone loved him like so this, but he might mean the best for beef, but we need to get that, you know, and I think you said that, that no bull, not one, every bull is different. Like, and if it's even Angus, that you have a bull for heifers and you have a bull for cows. Sort of, so, and the calving difficulty, low, the lower the better was always the phrase. It doesn't need to be one and 2%. Obviously, there's certainly one a low percentage for heifers, but for them cows and mature cows, you know, they will be able to calve like, so there's you know, three, four percent on Angus and herfs. It's not hard calving. I think that that's a very important message. Like, so it's like it's, it's the balance, like so. It's, that's I think that's very important. So just two questions, Les, because we better wrap it up. Um, just uh, just to go back to you, John. There, in terms of uh, just a clarification, you're recommending that people would do fixed time AI on those later calves that are cows that haven't been bred yet. Yeah, consult with the vet, and, and they'll give you the advice if there's a that you're picking them out. Yeah, yeah, that that'd be the recommendation. Where I suppose bring the vet and ask them; they, they'll know your story better. Okay, and then Stephen, this one is for you, I suppose. Maybe um. Just a question in relation to when when should beef farmers actually be buying calves or what age should they be buying them at, if you know what Ooh, I mean? Jesus, um, that's that's a hard question. Uh, so it's, I can't I can't I wouldn't be it'd be wrong to say we'll get the dairy farmer to to, to rear them and, and take the hassle out of me when I'm walking. Great. Look, I suppose that's a, it's a really good question as well. And I know if you look at policy and what what they're meant to be like on the trial farm, we buy them in at roughly three weeks of age. So that's that's in the buy in. You know, they're that little bit stronger, little bit like it's about, so when you're buying in calves, like stress is a big thing. So we buy from a specific bunch of farmers that we know give colostrum that jump you know, three weeks of roughly three weeks of age, like so that that they're well looked after. It's a huge impact to 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 the to a farmer's system. Genetics, hundred percent genetics of the cow, but the way the calf has been reared and that little bit extra time is definitely uh, is a benefit for us. So does and like even from the dairy farm, we have found on the trial farm. Uh, 150 grams a day difference between calves from the best dairy farms versus calves from the worst dairy farms. And what we do is we select, we basically look at that every year and uh, we it try and select only one. Yeah, we filter it. And, it. and it is important. Again, we're going back to them guys every year and they love it because they know, you know, they've basically it's a price in the market, or the average price of the week. They're getting the 25 euro. They know we're coming and going to collect them every, you know, once a week, every week. And the money probably is, it's probably you know it's, it's the service is a big thing like and yeah, they know yeah. we're going to buy yeah, them like, they're, so. they're clearing space for them all yeah like so look two three weeks age but uh that's what we that's what we look three weeks mostly 
Yeah, okay. So look, as I said, we're just caught for time there, so we have to wrap it up. But I suppose the, the key point, I suppose, coming from what you've seen, Stephen, is that the that choice of beef bull is so influential in terms of the performance. And again, there's always that certain element of sure what's in it for me, maybe. But like Janice said there, there's a lot of farmers rearing their own beef calves, as well as that repeatability of the customer coming back. So the person that buys those calves in 12 months time, they're going to see whether they're good or they're bad. And uh, they may not come back to you again. Like So if you can get those that use the opportunity to stare by beef AI to choose the best bulls uh, that you can to generate the best beef that you can, it's going to, as you said, give you kind of a, a USP maybe for your herd to sell, which, um, to sell on the stock. And then, John, your point is um, the same as what we're advocating, I suppose, within Chagisk as well, that uh, every three weeks of extra AI is going to reduce bull power requirement by half. And the vast majority of, the, of farms that we see probably have one or two stock bulls at most, which would mean on the figures that you said at one and a half cows per day, uh, uh, means that they you know, have to be down to about 30 cows only left. And even at that, it's a, it's a bit of an ask. And how do you know that you've only 30 cows left is the other question, of course. Yeah, that's, that's true. And when you only have 30 cows left, them cows aren't having the conversations and you're on today and I'm on tomorrow. Like yeah. before on today and not, none on tomorrow. So that's another side of it. Yeah. yeah. So very, very important message for people to take away today is that the opportunity to use beef AI is there. We should continue to use beef AI to reduce the requirement for bulls um, because otherwise we're going to have a, a very long tail in our calving pattern in 2023. And then the choice of the bull that's there, there are loads of options out there and you can choose good and bad and we should be trying to choose as, as the, the best as possible. And the genetics are now there to increase that. And I suppose some very rough work that's just been done there recently by George and one, uh, Alan Toomey and Moore Park as well is very crudely for people if you're looking for a figure is that whatever your beef sub index is for your cohort, if it's minus 10, you should be rough. And this is very crude. Pick a carcass figure approximately one for one, basically. So go plus 10 and you'll actually get the animals to come into the target. Now, as I said, that's crude and it's it's been it's going to be refined, but it's going to get those animals to this to, to the spec that Stephen is looking for of 280 to 320 kilos at an earlier stage as well. So the opportunity is there. Make sure people continue to use beef AI. Like Jan has said, get those later calvers bred. Uh, using your fixed time AI or whatever is recommended to you by your vet, top up your tail paint and keep AIing to, my personal preference would be to keep, do at least nine weeks of AI really, and then leave the bulls at it at that stage if you want to. Lots of people now using no bull at all because they have automated heat detection systems as well. And look, it's a good year in milk. It could be a year to be considering an investment like that too for people to make life easier because of the health and safety aspects to go with bulls as well. So look, guys, I'd like to thank you very much for coming on. Stephen, super video, nailed it on the head exactly what we were looking to try to do and having the information that we probably did, wouldn't have had access to without getting through to you. So thanks very much. And Jan, thanks for coming on and pr prompting me to, to cover this topic again with you there a couple of weeks ago. So thanks, guys. Um, I'll be back next week. Thanks, guys. Have a good week. That's all for this week's Let's Talk Dairy webinar series. And don't forget to look out for more bonus episodes each week. I'll be back with our usual Dairy Edge interview on Monday, so do listen in then. I'm Emma-Louise Coffey and thanks for listening.